from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass on All Souls Day. I am Father Hank van Meijl, and, and today your homilist is Deacon Mike Walls. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from two donors. The first is a family who are parishioners of St. Clement Paris in Etobicoke, Ontario, for the repose of the souls of the deceased siblings, nephews, nieces, and relatives. The second is Gart Horn from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, in loving memory of his wife, Jane Chewy, who passed away on November the 2nd, 2021. May the Chewy and Horn families continue to love one another as a testament to Jane's enduring love for her family. Or thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. And as we have in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And as we have placed ourselves before the Lord on All Souls Day, the commemoration of the faithful departed, and again recalling that we're weak and that we are longing to be in full union with God at one point. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son raises from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resur resurrection for your faithful servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered those who reproached him. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead, they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sin, nor repay us according to our iniquity. The Lord is kind and merciful. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. 
For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If we have died with Christ, we shall live with him. And if we are faithful to the end, we shall reign with him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Each day on this feast day of all souls, I'm reminded of four moments in my life. The first was uh, with my nan, my mom's grandmother. I remember this so clearly. I was in grade eight, going into grade nine. Uh, from elementary to high school, and we got a phone call. My grandmother had been taken to the hospital, and I remember seeing the whole expression of my dad's face change as he answered this call. He went in to speak to my mother, and then there was this scream followed by this uncontrollable cr crying as my, my grandmother had passed away. And it was the first time I remember someone close to me dying. And there was this, again, memory seared into my mind about going to the church that day as she came in, followed by her family with this candle, the Paschal candle being there. Many years later, I was visiting my dad in the hospital. He had been there because he had pneumonia. Just before I left, after spending some time with him, he asked me to do one thing for him, to buy some batteries for his uh, portable radio so that he could listen to the uh, hockey game the Junior B hockey game from this little town in which he lived. Uh, it turns out that's the last thing I ever did for my dad because by the time I got home, there was a phone call. And the phone call told me that my dad had died of a heart attack. Again, I was shocked, but the next, uh, next few days when we came to that church, we brought him into the church and there was that candle, the Paschal candle, the baptismal candle. Only two years after that, my middle brother, um, he had been living by himself. I came home from a sporting event I was at with my son, a beautiful day we had had, and I could see in my wife's face that something had happened. She had gotten a phone call, and this phone call told her that my brother Rick had died quite unexpectedly and alone. So not only was I sad, I had this sense of guilt that he was all alone when he died, but then a few days later at his funeral, we came in again into the church, and there was that candle the Paschal candle, the baptismal candle. And then my mom, again, a phone call late at night. She'd been taken to the hospital, uh, the nursing home where she was called. And we went, my brother and I, my remaining brother and I went. And I remember, this is how you can tell you're getting older. The doctor came out. The doctor looked like he was 12 years old. And he told us that my mom would not recover from that. And so for the next three days, we sat vigil with her. And on the Saturday night, we decided, my brother and I, we would rent a TV and we would watch Hockey Night in Canada, which was a tradition we had growing up. The Leafs played the Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs lost 5-0 in that game. One of the worst games I've ever seen. 
My mom died two hours later. I like to tell people that the Toronto Maple Leafs killed my mother. But she was a woman of great faith. And again, what happened at her funeral, at the funeral home, my brother spoke. And then that next day we had her funeral. We came into that church and there she was again at the front of the church with this candle and the Paschal candle. And in my homily, I said exactly what my brother said. The greatest gift my mother ever gave us was the gift of our faith. And you're going to see in all four stories, there's a phone call and there's a candle. And so what is this gift of faith, this gift of faith in Jesus Christ? Well, the very foundation of it is found in our three readings today. In our first reading, poor Job, he is a man that's just beleaguered. He's fighting with God almost, but he never loses faith. As a matter of fact, he has complete trust in his God. And he says in our reading, for I know that my Redeemer lives. St. Paul picks up on that, and he tells us who our Redeemer is that lives. And he says, Christ, Christ is our Redeemer. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. And then preparing all of the disciples, preparing us, Jesus sits with them and he says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. His passion, his death, his resurrection. Very truly, I tell you, he says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. I remember this saying someone once told me that when you take an apple, you can pretty well guess how many seeds are in the apple. But if you pick up a seed, you have no idea how many apples are in that seed. Perhaps the greatest part of this gift of faith is this. Death is not the end of anything. That is why during this month of November, especially on this day of all souls, but for the entire month, we as a community of prayer, the daily TV mass community comes together and we pray for all of those who are in our book of remembrance. Many of you have sent us names of your loved ones that you would like to have included and there's still time to do that. So I've asked the folks to make sure that our website is listed here in our email. So if you have names that you want to say, it's not sent to us, it's not too late. And then we will come together and we'll pray for the dead. But why do we do that? Why do Catholics pray for the dead? Well, I found this quote from uh, Pope Francis back in 2014. The Holy Father said this, church tradition has always urged prayer for the dead. In particular, by offering the celebration of the Eucharist for them. It is the best spiritual help that we can give to their souls, particularly to the most abandoned ones. And so on this All Souls Day, we are called to prayer, to pray for those who have died and are being purified in the final preparation for their entrance into heaven. That was a quote I found. It's beautiful. But what does this mean by this final preparation for entrance into heaven? Well, one of the most uh, powerful teachings of the Catholic Church, for me anyway, is the teaching on purgatory. Here's how the Catechism says it. All who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of their eternal salvation. But after death, they undergo purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter into the joy of heaven. See, my view of purgatory, it's not a place of punishment at all. As a matter of fact, it's a place where we get to see everything that happened in our lives, and we go through with the help of others, I think, spirits, angels, whatever you want to say, through this period of most perfect preparation. It's only there. We can't really do that unless we're a saint. We celebrated all the saints yesterday. But for most of us, we need this really important time of perfect preparation. And so we as a community come together and we pray for those souls in purgatory who are our loved ones, yes. But in a special way, we come to pray for those who have no one to pray for them as they go through this time of perfect preparation, purification in purgatory. Now, one of the most, I think, perfect examples uh, of what faith means, what this gift of faith is, is the Blessed Mary. Now, over the last little while, I've been spending some time preparing and working with the rest of the folks here at the Daily TV Mass on four 
um, uh, 30-minute uh, segments that we have offered, and we're calling it the Daily TV Rosary. We announced it back in April, or October, sorry, the month of the Holy Rosary. And in that, and as I was going through this, I got a deep appreciation of the mysteries of our faith as seen through the eyes of Mary. And look at Mary's life. She was this young girl who actually encounters this angel at the Annunciation, not quite sure of what that might mean, but she's open and trust enough to move forward. The birth of Jesus in the Nativity itself is a great challenge. We celebrate it as this great event, which it is, but we sometimes see how difficult it must have been for Mary and Joseph to actually go through this journey. They spend time as refugees in another land, and at some point after they return to Nazareth, Mary experienced the loss of Joseph, her husband, her beloved. And then, in a sense, she loses Jesus as he leaves to go on his public ministry. But then she is, and we know, a witness to his passion, to his suffering. And we see that over and over again in these mysteries of the rosary. But perhaps the most impactful picture to me of all of the hundreds that we looked at and decided to include in these stories were the pictures of Mary with the lifeless body of Jesus. They really touched me, especially this one in particular. And it's not the best, it's not the most famous, but it really just caught to me really that moment. But you see, Mary had this great trust, didn't she? She knew that this was not the end of anything. And she was there that morning of the resurrection. She was there at Pentecost, his ascension into heaven. And then Mary herself was assumed into heaven, crowned uh, queen of the world, by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as a perfect person, one perfectly purified in her life here on earth, but still now reunited with her Son, our Redeemer. You see, it's this faith that allows us to live in peace, why we are called to go into the world and to glorify the Lord by our human life, knowing that one day we will be with Jesus in paradise. God bless. I invite you now to join in our prayers, our prayers for those uh, that we hold so dear. For all of those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our community prayer this month is for those listed in the daily TV Mass book of remembrance and for all the souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the angels and saints, we beg for an outpouring of your divine mercy upon every poor sinner and every poor soul in purgatory. Cleanse them all, especially our family and friends who have died, and bring them into the full beauty and splendor of your presence. Jesus, we trust in you. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. 
Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into your glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying, as one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. <clears throat> giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. <clears throat> Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis or Pope, Francis or Bishop, the other bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have called your own. <clears throat> Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, O Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Let us offer each other of the Lord the sign be with peace. you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. We gather.